Hello everyone and welcome to this IGCSE Art and Design Module 2 training event and welcome back to those of you who attended Module 1 yesterday. The Module 1 and 2 training recordings will be made publicly available two to three weeks after this event. The training presentations or PACs, as they're often referred to, will be made available on the Qualification Course Materials page under Past Training Content. Jacqueline Veet, our subject advisor for Art, Design and Media, will be on hand in the chat to answer any questions you may have. And Jacqueline will also be answering questions outside the chat at certain points during the presentation. In module one yesterday, we covered how the qualification is devised and fundamental documentation. We reviewed the content of the qualification. We explored how to plan the course and we covered understanding the assessment of the qualification and how to prepare students. We also identified the support available from Pearson. In module two today, we are going to cover how to understand the assessment objectives for this qualification, how to explore the idea of a broad based theme and how to understand the marking criteria and how to improve performance. We will also be going over the support available for Pearson as we did yesterday. We're now going to start looking at the assessment process. You may find it useful to have a copy of the taxonomy and assessment grid for reference, which will help you to gain a better understanding of how examiners mark the work. You should find a copy in the resources section on your screen. Uh, Jacqueline may also be able to share these documents with you in the chat. As covered in yesterday's session, each assessment objective has equal weighting of 25%, carrying equal importance in assessment decisions. Remember, the submission of work that each component requires either images of three A2 sheets of supporting studies and images of one A2 sheet of the final outcome, or a PowerPoint containing no more than 20 slides. You may use Google Slides or Canva. Both are equally, sub equally suitable submission options. I'm now going to explain the assessment objectives in more detail by showing examples of work for each assessment objective using one fine art and one textile design submission. The work I will be showing you in this section are from candidates who submitted work on A2 sheets. Later in the presentation, I will show you an example of a submission of work presented on slides. Teachers can advise students on how to be selective and present their best work. Remember, it is quality, over quantity. Assessment objective one. In order to develop an idea, students should know and understand a range of work by exploring both contemporary and historical sources of art and design through visual research and first-hand experiences. Students should demonstrate a critical understanding of sources, and one of the best ways is to show that they have informed ideas and investigations. In this assessment objective, it is important that students have a personal focus in helping them to produce a final outcome. The following slides will exemplify how this assessment objective may be evidenced. I will give you a bit more time to look at the visual images in each of these slides before moving on to the next. Our new artist directory lists artists from a range of diverse backgrounds, which students could use for their investigations. Please use the link in the slide to access this information. It is also on our website. This also links to our new contextual references guide that it lists different websites students could use as well. And there is also a quick video tutorial on how to use the artist directory. Assessment objective one, developing an idea. In this component one fine art submission, the development of ideas and the critical understanding of the sources which have informed them evidences just exceptional ability 
with a mark of C, 16, which is the entry point to mark band six. When assessing the work using the taxonomy, the descriptors which apply to this submission of work are highly skilled and sophisticated. The candidate presents this project on the theme of collections on A2 sheets of card, and you can tell that they have been selective in their choice of images in the way the work has been arranged. I will be showing examples for each assessment objective for this candidate submission. You can clearly see that the candidate's development of ideas have been informed and inspired by the semi-photorealist contemporary still life work of Joel Penkman and René Magritte's surreal paintings that place familiar objects in unexpected contexts. The candidate has developed, as evidenced, a sophisticated critical understanding of the concept of surrealism using Photoshop to respond to the contextual sources in the development of their ideas. The colored pencil and digital compositions demonstrate highly skilled visual language and understanding of the formal elements in the context of their investigation. This is a component one textile design submission. This body of work has also been presented on four A2 sheets. It is not on the website yet, but it will be soon. For assessment objective one, this candidate demonstrates fully emerging competent ability in the development of their own ideas and critical understanding of the sources which have informed them. This would give the candidate a mark of nine in mark band three, emerging competent. The candidate has evident a critical understanding of sources and a broadening approach in the development of their ideas by responding to William Morris's flora and fauna textile designs, Simon Hantai's pliage, folding printed and painting fabric designs, and George Brack's Cubis compositions in a wide range of media including collage, acrylic paint, lino printing, Photoshop, and their own photography. Assessment objective two, refinement. Refining work as it progresses becomes an integral part of the course if there is a genuine desire to review and refine ideas and intentions. This is an important part in the investigation of ideas and exploration of media and materials. Students refine their work through the understanding and use of a range of materials, equipment, processes and techniques in two and or three dimensions using digital processes where appropriate. The following slides will exemplify how this assessment objective may be evidenced. When refining work, this candidate explores ideas through the processes of experimentation and review using a range of materials, techniques and processes at the level of just exceptional ability in Mark Band 6, exceptional with a mark of 16. The candidate has refined their idea of collections of sweets and food into a sophisticated and highly skilled surrealist composition using a range of digital and painting techniques and processes using Photoshop and oil paint. This demonstrates exceptional visual language skills.
For assessment objective two, when refining work, this candidate demonstrates a fully emerging competent ability to experiment with a variety of media, techniques and processes. This would give the candidate a mark of nine in mark band three, emerging competent. You can see from these studies, the candidate experiments with lino printing by designing a pattern inspired by William Morris's flora motifs and uses Procreate and Photoshop to edit and refine their design. The candidate also incorporates Simon Hantai's pliage technique by folding the fabric into sections before printing. Although repetitive in places, the candidate demonstrates a fully emerging competent ability to refine work through the exploration of ideas and reflection. Assessment objective three, recording. Undertake visual research using primary and secondary sources and record observations, experiences and ideas in appropriate ways. As work progresses, the emphasis is on recording as a continual process, which should take place throughout the creative journey. Although, although though forms of recording are not explicitly mentioned in the assessment objective, this recording should be primarily visual. This candidate demonstrates just exceptional ability when recording from observation, experience and ideas with a mark of 16. This is the entry point to mark band six, exceptional. In this example, the candidate uses a variety of media and painting surfaces to record their visual research and creates a sweet composition in Photoshop before producing an oil painting. This body of work is an excellent example of how a candidate uses digital processes in the development of ideas without diluting the quality of their visual language skills and understanding of media, techniques and processes. The candidate explains the context of their idea related to collections in their annotation. For example, when referring to the first hand observational drawing of a pomegranate, the candidate writes, as I considered the quantity of seeds, I thought that using a sharp pencil would be best to depict small seeds and to express its transparency. I spared no effort to present the reflecting side highlights of the surface of the pomegranate and the three dimensional convex shaped calyx. Calyx is the cup like cavity on the top of the pomegranate. For assessment objective three, when refining work, this candidate demonstrates just competent and consistent ability to record ideas through personal observations and insights through visual and other methods. This would give the candidate a mark of 10 in mark band four, competent and consistent. This mark is at the entry point of mark band four. The candidate uses a variety of media, such as pencil, charcoal, chalk, Chinese ink, bleach, and oil pastels to record their visual research from primary and secondary sources. And this informs the development of ideas for a textile design outcome. Annotation is purposeful and relevant. For example, the candidate writes, I now need to think how I can manipulate the floral image to create pattern designs for textiles.
Assessment Objective 4, Personal Response. Assessment Objective 4 is about presenting a personal, informed and meaningful response from initial research through to the final piece. Students should demonstrate analytical and critical understanding as they respond to the theme. To make a meaningful response, it is important for students to demonstrate that they have selected suitable source material and media. They should make connections between their work and suitable contextual sources used to inform the development of their ideas. Students should also demonstrate an understanding of visual language through the application of the formal elements. The visual language in this final outcome demonstrates just exceptional ability in the application of the formal elements with a mark of 16. The total mark for this candidate submission is 64, which is at the entry point to mark band six. When assessing the work using the taxonomy, the descriptors which apply to this work are highly skilled and sophisticated. To gain higher marks in mark band six, the candidate's approach would need to be more daring and unexpected. Throughout the submission, the candidate has developed this composition using Photoshop and then gone on to refine this idea to produce a final outcome using oil paint. This demonstrates exceptional understanding of visual language through the application of the formal element. The visual language in this textile design final outcome demonstrates just competent and consistent ability in the application of the formal elements with a mark of 10. The total mark for this candidate submission is 38, which falls between mark band three, emerging competent, and mark band four, competent and consistent. Knowledge, understanding and skills are generally adequate, but safe. To move all assessment objectives into mark band four, the candidate submission would need to evidence more skill and refinement in the development and experimentation of ideas. When assessing the work using the taxonomy, the descriptors which apply to this body of work are reflective, predictable, broadening, repetitive, intentional, and adequate from Mark Band 3 and purposeful from Mark Band 4. Okay, we will now look at a component two fine art submission presented on slides, as I thought it would be interesting for you to see an example of this option to submit students' work. Okay, in module one yesterday, we covered how examiners would use the descriptors of the taxonomy to decide which mark band best fits the visual characteristics of the work and then decide whether each assessment objective just, mostly, or fully meets the standard for this mark range using the assessment grid and exemplar standards. As explained yesterday, examiners use this assessment grid to decide on a mark for each assessment objective after deciding on a mark band using the descriptors on the taxonomy. Centres could gain a better understanding of assessment if you use the taxonomy assessment grid and publish standard exemplars for your assessment purposes throughout the course. This is a component to fine art submission on the theme of escape, which was last year's exam title. This is a submission of work of 15 slides but I have selected 11 to show you as they still evidence the marks awarded. Please note the maximum number of slides that can be submitted for each component is 20. For assessment objective one, this candidate presents a selection of Anselm Kiefer's work alongside their own responses. 
the work evidences an informed, critical understanding of Anselm Kiefer's diverse mixed media work and his liberal application of a wide range of painting media inspired by nature. This work evidences a fully competent consistent ability in the development of ideas and in the candidate's effective use of oil paint and paste, charcoal and short pastels. This candidate achieved a mark of 12 in mark band four, which is at the top of that mark band. Please note, there is not a set number of artists students need to study as part of their investigation, as they may also use primary and secondary source material to inspire their investigations. Assessment objective two, inspired by Anselm Kiefer's use of media, materials, techniques and processes, the candidate demonstrates just confident assured ability to refine their work through a diverse and effective selection of experimentation and review. The assessment objective, this assessment objective is the strength of the submission, which is why the candidate moves into the higher mark band five with a mark of 13. And you can see there's four slides here showing the development and the exploration of ideas with media. And if you're thinking about the sheets we were just talking about, I mean, this would equate, these four, these four slides would equate to one A2 sheet. You can see from these studies that the candidate experiments with monoprinting using acrylic and spray paint, paste, sand and salt, and painting using PVA glue and tempera paint create textural surface qualities in response to Kiefer's work. There is also evidence of some meaningful annotation to explain their ideas and insights. For example, experimenting with materials to achieve the look of soil and leaves using the warm tones seen during autumn. Assessment objective three, the candidate evidence is fully competent and consistent ability to record from observation, experience and ideas and is awarded a mark of 12 at the top of mark band four. The candidate demonstrates skillful recording of their initial ideas based on escaping through nature from primary and secondary sources and has clearly been inspired by the changing colors in seasonal landscapes. Materials used to record their ideas include oil paint and pastels, watercolour pencils, pencils and textural paste. Drawing from first-hand observation is beneficial for the candidate to develop their visual language skills, but recording from the candidate's own photography and secondary sources are also credible sources of visual information. Annotation is brief but concise and meaningful. The candidate writes, after capturing all seasons, I was mostly fascinated by the warm tone of autumn. I decided to focus on some element that can mostly be seen in autumn. Assessment objective four, presentation of the final outcome demonstrates a mostly competent and consistent ability to produce a personal and meaningful response that realizes intentions and demonstrates an understanding of visual language. The candidate was awarded a mark of 11 in mark band four. To achieve a mark of 12, and demonstrate a fully competent and consistent ability, the candidate, candidate would need to produce a more skillful and refined outcome. This candidate chose to annotate their final outcome, but this is not a requirement, as the examiner would be able to tell if a student has realized their intentions. 
The total mark for this submission was 48. It fully exemplifies the descriptors for Mark Band 4, as knowledge, understanding and skills are secure and cohesive throughout. The following slides will demonstrate to you how the marks are distributed on the assessment grid and the descriptors on the taxonomy are highlighted. You can clearly see from the assessment grid how the marks are distributed across the four assessment objectives. Assessment objective two was the strength of the submission. And assessment objective four was the weakest. The visual characteristics of this fine art submission is fully competent and consistent and evidences all the descriptors for Mark Band 4. The work is informed, purposeful, diverse, sustained, skillful, and effective. This slide clearly shows the mark breakdown and mark band for each assessment objective and the descriptors from the taxonomy that best fits the visual characteristics of this fine art component to submission. Jacqueline, do you want to answer some more questions before I go on to broad-based themes? I'm just catching up on the ones in the chat. So maybe okay, you can bring on, on and then I'll, I've, I'm pulling okay. up ones that are really good to, to discuss them. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, how to use broad-based themes. We already see great art and design teaching in centres. So our aim with our international GCSE is to support your teaching by encouraging creativity, independence and progression. The course develops transferable skills. We all know that studying art and design allows students to develop val valuable transferable skills, such as the ability to apply a creative approach to problem solving, consider and develop original ideas, analyze critically their own and others' work, express individual thoughts and choices confidently, and take risks, experiment, and learn from mistakes. For this component, and component one, I want to give you flexibility and choice. And we, as Pearson, design a course of study that appeals to your students and draws on your expertise and the resources you have available in your department. For planning and delivering your course, you need to decide which of the international GCSE art and design titles to offer. Students must work in the same title for both components. For example, if they do fine art for component one, they must do fine art for component two. You then need to plan a course that gives students the opportunities to work in appropriate area or areas of study. You have all seen this year's exam paper and we'll see that we provide a visually engaging and accessible externally set assignment exam for component two with a broad based theme. So students can feel confident completing the ESA using and refining the knowledge, understanding and skills developed throughout their course. The exam paper provides several helpful starting points with images of artwork that are designed to encourage and inspire initial ideas. You may choose to give your students a mock exam assignment in component, one, in component one, including a period of sustained focus. This provides students with the opportunity to experience content of an externally set assignment using a previous ESA theme to include developing and exploring ideas, researching primary and contextual sources, experimenting with media materials techniques and processes, and presenting a personal response. Students could then be given the opportunity to improve their mock exam assignment after feedback from their teacher. The work produced during this mock exam project could be submitted for the final assessment project for the personal 
portfolio. We're now going to look at how this qualification is graded. Our international GCSE qualifications follows the same grading structure as our UK GCSE qualifications. They're graded using the nine to one grading scale, nine being the highest and one the lowest. Once the student submission has been marked by the examiner, the marks for each component are added together for a total subject mark. A grade is then awarded based on the total mark. For grade boundaries that change every year, please refer to the grade boundaries document for the relevant year on our website. The link is in the slide. As also shown in module one yesterday, this slide shows you where to find our new exemplar library, which has been created to make access to our exemplar materials more accessible and easier to find. They are organized in gallery view by performance band and component to assist you with internal assessment throughout your course. Please use the link in the slide. We're coming, nearly coming to the end of the presentation, um, but just wanted to explain this slide. For further support, you can use these links to email the art and design team to discuss any further questions. You can also book a catch up with our subject advisor, Jacqueline, who has been in the chat today and read the latest subject advisor updates. I recommend signing up for these monthly updates using the link in this slide to get the updates directly to your email. There are art and design communities available to join to discuss ideas with other teachers. In addition, you can sign up for future training on the Pearson Professional Development Academy and watch previously recorded training events on the Art and Side Training and Network Events YouTube playlist, as Jacqueline has already mentioned. Jacqueline is going to um, join us now for more questions and um, answers. Um, and I hope that you found this information useful today. Um, we finished the presentation early, so there is time for you to ask more questions. Um, thank you so much for Jacqueline, who has been assisting me today in the chat. And we're very lucky to have her with us, as she is our Art and Design Subject Advisor for all our Art, Design and Media qualifications. Thank you very much, Lindsay. So we've got quite a few questions coming up. I've answered some in the chat, but um, I've, I've pulled out some to, to discuss. So um, perhaps you could help with this question, Lindsay. Can students refine their artist response as the final outcome, or do they have to produce the other one as final? Another one, sorry. Um, if it's and responding to an artist as, as a part of your development of ideas, and you have shown that your idea is, is in response rather than uh, too closely linked or copied from the artist, i.e. you've responded to techniques and processes learned from the artist and inspired by subject matter, et cetera, then it's perfectly valid. Um, what, what is not a good idea is to transcribe artist work to submit for that final outcome. Absolutely. And then a follow-up to that question is, do students need to produce an artist response for each artist they study? No, not at all. Um, you can have uh, you can have a selection of artists that inspire um, your line of inquiry, and you just respond to those ones that are relevant for you and where you want to take your project to the next level. So there might be some things that inspire by composition, by color, by technique, by process, and whatever the, of those sources that you want to take further. Uh, and explore in more detail with it through experimentation, uh, you may do that, but you certainly don't need to respond to every artist. Absolutely. And another question that came up is how much analysis of an artist's work is needed? Um, the, the visual evidence is the most important in any of our art and design qualifications rather than annotation. Um, so 
we can see that you have understood and critically analyzed artist work by the way that you have responded to it and use the information gained from studying the artist in the development of your ideas. So if you feel that it's not obvious to the examiner, um, particularly like the example I showed yesterday for the annotation with the door and the lock with the light shining through, which was demonstrating the candidate's concept of hope shining through the door. Um, if the concept is not obvious, or would not be obvious to the examiner, it is, that's when it's quite useful to put some annotation to explain that. But you don't need to do any lengthy analysis. It should be visually obvious that you've analysed the sources. Thank you. And just while Lindsay was talking there, I want to let everybody know that I found a way to share the exemplars that are being uploaded um, with you guys using Dropbox. Hopefully it is working. Um, if, if somebody can let me know if they're able to download those. I'm also including the fine art ones that are were uploaded prior to Christmas. And so these show a range of different titles um, different performance bands. They each have the taxonomy with the descriptors highlighted so that you can understand what which words apply to the marks that were awarded. And this is a similar process that you would do when you get your results. So you would look at the taxonomy, look at the grades, the marks breakdown for each learner, and then you can see which mark bands they were performance level they were falling under. Um, and the descriptors that are within that to help you interpret the results that come out as well. But I've put those there. Hopefully you guys are able to download them. They got kind of mixed up between some um, other questions that came through, but there are one, two, three, four, five um, in there. So it, oh, it's file restricted by account admin. Sorry, I thought I found a way. <laughs> 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 um, let me just go on to the next question and then I'll see if I can find a way to, it does say guest is viewing now. Can you we transfer? I don't have a we transfer account, unfortunately. And by the time I get all that sorted, they'll be on the website anyway. I was just trying to find a way. Oh, Ron has, thank you. Oh. Delegate materials. Ron, is that um is that a download for the exemplars I just did, or is that something else, Ron? Oh, it's the link to the yeah. So the resources in the meeting, unfortunately, these PDFs I can't add because they're too large. You can see the file size is quite big. So it was not allowing me to upload them to the event. So I had been trying to find a different way to get those shared with you guys. Um, but we'll carry on with the questions. Um, it does say guest is viewing some of them. So I, I don't know if some people were able to, to get into there or not. I might just have to change permissions. But let's move on to the next questions and then I can look at that. So another question that came up, um, Lindsay, perhaps you can help with this one is, <laughs> excuse me. How do you define if it's personal and meaningful? Does it have to connect to the students? And I can't hear you, Jacqueline. Oh, have I gone? Oh, on? No. Okay, no, you hear can. me now. Yeah, I can. But, sorry, the next question was How do you define it is personal and meaningful? Does it have to connect to the students and how? Okay, so um, personal and meaningful is in terms of annotation is basically uh, like some of the examples I've given you um, with the autumn, the candidate wanted to focus on aspect of a season and like the warm colours of autumn and that was a personal selection. So she, he or she wanted to exemplify the reasons why they made that choice but it was meaningful in the way that they introduced the concepts of autumn in comparison with nature and, and some Kiefer's work. So meaningful in that it was relevant to their line of inquiry, personal in that they made that choice and selection 
of the images that they wanted to pursue, which was an important part of that line of inquiry. Is that it? Does that answer the question? Yes, I think so. I was just checking the permissions on the things. It says it should be open to anybody with the link. I'll keep double checking that. Let's go on to the next question. So now I have to go back to the chat and just make sure I didn't miss any. Um, so I've put the administrative support guide in there for the exam conditions. And we've got another question. I don't think that we can make the assumption that one digital slide equates to an A4 size part of the old A2 card. I have students who are including work A3 or larger and fitting them onto one slide. That's absolutely fine. You can do what you want. What you put on those slides is entirely up to you, whether whatever size the images are. Um, we just want centers to have the flexibility of submitting work on four A2 sheets or 20 slides. But what you put on those slides is entirely up to you and the candidate. And it won't disadvantage or advantage centers at all because what one student can show in 10 slides, another student might use the full 20 slides. They don't have to use the full 20 slides. No, they and don't at all. Yeah, I think we're focusing too much on quantity here. Yeah, it's quality that we're looking for. Yeah. yeah, and and the slides I've just shown you, there was 15 slides submitted, um, but we the examiner would have found those marks with 11 slides, the ones that I exemplified in this presentation. But it's entirely up to you whether you you complete you add all 20 that's absolutely fine uh no one is going to be disadvantaged by uh, submitting fewer than 20 or 20. it's the quality of the work and how the candidate has a, has um exemplified and fulfilled the the four assessment objectives in their submission yeah and i think with with art i've seen students create huge portfolios of work, but they don't really say much with it and it doesn't really go anywhere. And actually the quality is not there. And I've seen students create very concise portfolios of work in my teaching career. And the quality was phenomenal in terms of their ideas and their innovation. And we need to remember those, those taxonomy descriptors. I think anytime we're starting to worry about quantity or size of things, we need to just go back to that taxonomy of descriptors and look at those, those mark bands. I mean, if we look at the confident and assured, yes, advanced could apply to skill, but if we look at those other descriptors, it's comprehensive, it's perceptive, it's exciting, it's in-depth, it's fully resolved, it has risk-taking. That can be shown in lots of different quantities. It's not about how many slides or how many pieces of artwork they do. It's about making sure that the artwork that they do captures those, those descriptors. And same with exceptional. We've got highly skilled as one of them. And a lot of people were commenting on the technical skill needed to get the higher grades. And that can be one descriptor, but it can't be on its own to re reach that mark band. If you look at the other descriptors within that mark band, it's inspired, it's intuitive, it's sophisticated, it's insightful it's powerful, it's daring, it's unexpected. All of those go along with the quality of the work as a whole, not just they can paint or copy an artist's artwork really, really well. It's about their exactly. creative process and journey. So I think we always have to go back sorry. to those. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, <laughs> that's why the exemplars um, and the exemplar library is so good for you to use with your students, because you'll be able to look at different performance levels or different mark bands and be able to identify some of those descriptors in the candidate's work throughout the course. And this will help you to see what they need to do to get, um, to make progress, I suppose, in, in their skills or development of ideas or understanding of their contextual references and how to respond to artists in the development process. 
And having a look at our exemplars really gives you a good idea of A, how the work has been presented. That's a really good source of information. The different types of presentation, the different way the, the work's been set out. Um, some work has a lot of annotations, some doesn't have any, and some, some are submitted on slides on the exemplars. So I think our exemplar library will really help you all to get a better understanding of a lot of the questions that have come up today on quantity, presentation, content, et cetera. Um, so that would be really, I think, really useful for you to look at when you go back to your centres.